Uh oh. Still trying to set up. Girl, it's live. <laughs> Don't mind me if I start fussing at my kids and everything. Just know they out here. Um, yeah, go play. Like that. So, um, <laughs> hi everybody. I am I Heart Tia Tia. Uh, I'm here to do another Bible discussion. Just um, talk about things that I have heard. Um, talk about things that I know from the Bible. And I'm going to take and place it on YouTube. You can always go to jw.org and get more information. Do your own research and go about it that way um when i personally became a Jehovah witness part of that decision was to teach others what i have learned from the bible to share with others so that they too could benefit from learning the truth about god so my tiktok i'm a silly overall like just diverse person <laughs> so um, I started having Bible discussions with people like online. Um, I want to say more actively in 2018. Um, but before that, basically, I would just speak to people who really had questions or who would really show interest. But now is more so. I see the need and I'm here to help so never when I speak and I show what I know from here it's not my standard it's not some parts would be my opinion but just like I tell people all the time what you do with it is up to you I'm just the messenger so um, one thing I've seen is people saying that the way you find God is through yourself. You know, the God in you. That you are God. And I find that statement very deceptive. And the reason why is understanding the difference between like if you consider yourself a god or the god in you we're created in god's image so being created in god's image yeah you, know, you could say there is a god in you but being created in god's image doesn't mean that you are a god and the level and extent that people take it to um it's like it's a difference between having self-respect. It's a difference between having boundaries. It's a difference between showing love. It's a difference between having courage. It's a difference between all those things. Um, it's even a difference between, you know, having authority or showing a level of superiority in the sense of we all have talents we all have a purpose we all have something that god has given us the ability to do in order to fulfill our purpose so for the people that look at it like i am a god and there's no one above me and i'm all say all be all there is I'm, I'm sorry it, that's not how you find God. <laughs> um, it may be how you find yourself, but once you find yourself, you still have to find God. And the reason is because no matter how great you are, or okay, baby, thank you. Um, no matter how great you are, or your ability, or anything of that nature. Is something that can be taken away from you because we're imperfect and Jehovah he doesn't like haughtiness that haughtiness uh, it honestly take away your ability to 
learn. It take away your ability to actually be greater. It take away all those qualities that can really be enhanced. So my son, he asked me a question um, the other day and I'm an advanced Bible student. So he asked me, he said, mom, what if there's another God just like God who can do exactly what God does? And you know, there, there really is another God like Jehovah. And I broke it down to him real quick. I said, well, Jehovah said he's the only one. He's the only one. There's only one like him. He said there are many gods, there are many lords, but there's only one like him. And if there is another one who is as superior, as almighty, as loving, as anything as he is, then that means he's a liar. God cannot lie. So it takes and it invalidates everything that we could ever learn from Jehovah. Everything that we could ever see, everything that we could ever think. So I was basically showing him how to reason on certain thoughts and certain aspects of what people are saying and being taught things that they think because if you don't accept certain foundational truths you can't accept overall truths so excuse me i'm in uh, ecclesiastes and i'm i use the new world translation of the holy scriptures it's my study bible and as you see, like, I mark up through it and everything, and I, I really study. So, um, I'm in a book of Ecclesiastes, and I'm going to read chapter 8, and I'm going to just start at verse 15. And it says, and this is um, Solomon talking, and it says, so I recommend it rejoicing. Because there is nothing better for a man under the sun than to eat and drink and rejoice. This should accompany him as he works hard during the days of his life, which the true God gives him under the sun. I apply my heart to acquire wisdom and to see all the activities happening on the earth, even under, I'm sorry, even going without sleep day and night. Then I considered all the works of the true God, and I realized that mankind cannot comprehend what happens under the sun. No matter how hard men try, they cannot comprehend it. Even if they claim that they have, I'm sorry, even if they claim that they are wise enough to know, they cannot really comprehend it. So we think about all the wisdom in the world, all the knowledge, and for me, I think about science, how even when we take in, you know, we're taught in school, oh, um, we have the atom, and you have the electrons and the neutrons, and, you know, you put it together, and you take a hydrogen atom, and, you know, all this stuff, and the complexity of it all and how it works even if we understand it it's still so complex it's still so much that we don't understand and I think that is absolutely amazing because just in that aspect alone that proves another fact in the Bible that no matter how much we comprehend we cannot fully comprehend it so I'm going to continue reading um, in chapter 9. I'm still in Ecclesiastes. And I'm just going to start at um, first, the first verse. It says, So I took all of this to heart and concluded that the righteous and the wise 
as well as their works are in the hands of the true God. Men are not aware of the love and the hate that took place prior to them. All have the very same outcome, the righteous and the wicked, the good and the clean, and the unclean, those sacrificing and those not sacrificing. The good one is the same as the sinner. The one who swears an oath is the same as the one who is cautious about swearing an oath. This is a distressing thing that happens under the sun because all have the same outcome. The heart of humans is also full of bad and there is madness in their heart during their life and then they die. So he's saying that no matter what we do, the eventual outcome is death. So let me keep reading. It says, there is hope for whoever is among the living because a live dog is better off than a dead lion. So be grateful for each day. <laughs> for the living know <laughs> they will die, but the dead know nothing at all, nor do they have any more reward because all memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hate and their jealousy have already perished, and they no longer have any share in what is done under the sun. So this scripture right here in particular um, is just talking about the condition of the dead. Once someone passes away in death and sleep, they're no longer aware of anything that they were aware of while they were living. They have fallen asleep in death. So let me keep on reading um, verse 7. It says, Go, eat your food with rejoicing, and drink your wine with a cheerful heart, for already the true God has found pleasure in your works. May your clothing always be white, and do not fail to put oil on your head. Enjoy life with your beloved wife all the days of your feudal life, which he has given you under the sun all the days of your futility <laughs> for that is your lot in life and in your hard work at which you toil under the sun whatever your hands find do do with all your might for there is no work nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave where you are going so this is just really Solomon giving his perspective of the eventuality of mankind and basically to enjoy each day that we can, to be grateful and to appreciate life. So, yeah, because, uh, a live dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess always come back with gratitude, you know. <laughs> you can be the mightiest, you can be the greatest, you can be on the top of the world. But once you pass away and everything, you, you have to wait. You have to wait until Jehovah decides what he is going to personally do with you. So... <laughs> Uh, okay <laughs> so I turned the page and um and all the wisdom that Solomon had and everything like oh my god it, it's so much that we can learn just it, it's really so much but this scripture um really just brings it all home when it comes to everything like worship when it comes to uh, our perspective of how we live our lives and what we do it really come down to this scripture because we all have a spiritual need so in having that spiritual need we're automatically going to attach ourselves to something we're going to attach something that we feel is going to help us spiritually um, and that's overall with our mental, our physical, our everything. 
So whatever it is that you place the most importance on, the highest esteem, um, for the most part, you can technically consider it a form of worship. So in that, like some people, they choose work, they choose recreation, they choose um, just anything that they choose money. They choose is whatever you put your highest value on. Um, it can be anything. So Ecclesiastes on um, chapter 12 and verse 13 says the conclusion of the matter everything having been heard is fear the true God and keep his commandments for this is the whole obligation of man for the true God will judge every deed including every hidden thing as to whether it is good or bad so Jehovah he has a standard and you find him in the Bible and some things are hidden for a time because they're considered sacred secrets and they will be revealed they will because it's for a set time but we as humans we have a concept of good well not the concept let me take that back because Actually, I had this discussion with them, too, in Genesis. Talking about gods and everything. So, in Genesis, where it says... Oh, let me find it. Let me find it. I should have highlighted it. Um, okay. After... see okay I'm just gonna start at verse 3 Genesis chapter 3 and okay um no Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 it says now the serpent was the most cautious of all the wild animals of the field that Jehovah God had made so it said to the woman did God really say that you must not eat from every tree of the garden at this, the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of all the fruit of the trees of the garden. But God has said about the tree, the, said about the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, You must not eat from it. No, you must not touch it. Otherwise, you will die. At this, the serpent said to the woman, You certainly will not die. For God knows that in the very day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and bad. So, we know she partook of the fruit, and also gave some to her husband. So, let me jump down and find a verse. Um, jump down to verse 13, and see if this is exactly where it's at. And it says... Jehovah Mommy. God then said to the woman, Mommy, Yes. You go to house. Okay, go ahead. Okay, verse 13. Jehovah God then said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman replied, The serpent deceived me, so I ate. Then Jehovah God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are the cursed one out of all the domestic animals and out of all the wild animals of the field. On your belly you will go, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Okay, so let me jump down some more. Do, do, do. Okay, um, verse 22, and it says, Jehovah God then said, Here the man has become like one of us in knowing good and bad. Now, in order that he may not put his hands out and take fruit also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. With that, Jehovah God expelled him from the garden of Eden to cultivate the ground from which he had been taken. So, he drove the man out 
and he posted at the east of the Garden of Eden the cherubs and the flaming blade of a sword that was turning continuously to guard the way to the tree of life. So we see from what we just read that Jehovah told them that if they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and bad, that they would have knowledge of good and bad, but they would die. The serpent king, which is Satan, he came and he told her, God knows that in the day that you eat from it, you'll become like God, knowing good and bad. So here in verse 22, we see Jehovah God said, here the man has become like one of us in knowing good and bad. What did that accomplish? Knowing good and bad. Before they partook of it, they didn't know good and bad. So what did they know? They were very intelligent. They had work. They were in a garden, paradise. So what did they gain by knowing good and bad? But we know what they lost. So... Jehovah put a cherub, which is one of his servants, an angel, at the east of the garden so that they couldn't get to the tree of life, which was also <laughs> in the garden with the tree of knowledge of good and bad. So I have an illustration, actually. Um, one of my children... My sister had like uh got cookies, a bunch of really, really good cookies from a friend. And all different kinds. Had chocolate, had um pistachio, had um ooh, like sprinkles and cheesecake. Like it was literally like a bunch of cookies. Really, really good cookies. And they weren't little cookies, they were big cookies like, like that and in the box it was one particular cookie that she said was her cookie she said it's my cookie do not eat my cookie you can eat all the other cookies eat as many as you want do not eat this one cookie well my son he decided that because that one cookie was the cookie he was told that he couldn't have. He wanted it. And he went and he ate half that cookie. And went and got some other cookies too. And it was so many. It was so many cookies. <laughs> she trying it. Uh uh. Move. There was so many cookies. And he could have had any cookies that he wanted. He could have had as many as he wanted. But he chose to go ahead and do what he was told not to do. So, do y'all think he was wrong for taking that cookie? Was the temptation too great? Because he had all the other cookies. He just didn't know what that one cookie tastes like. But they were hers. So, that was the illustration that I related to with the Bible accounts. So, I hope y'all relate to it as well, um, that it give you food for thought in regards to having the right or the authority to say what someone can have and what someone can't have when it's yours. Jehovah had gave them everything. He even gave them the tree of life. And instead of eating from the tree that they were allowed to eat from, that would have gave them everlasting life. They ate from the tree that ultimately ended up killing them as well as all of mankind. Because in this account, they hadn't had children yet. So, I encourage you, read your Bible. Even if you don't understand it, you can always go to jw.org. Um, Bible educational work is what we do. <laughs> um Knowledge of Jehovah will fill the earth. It 
is inevitable. It's going to happen. Everyone have to know about Jehovah. Now, if someone choose not to, then that's their choice. But it's going to fill the earth. And that's because we're living in a time of the end. And Jehovah said that the good news of the kingdom has to be preached. And everything that's happening in the earth has to happen to all of mankind. We're all going to be judged. We're all going to be... We're, we're all are accountable. That's, we're all accountable. So, I'm going to leave that there for this time. Um, and I'll be back another time. I might post <laughs> when I'm going to go live. I might not. I don't know. It depends on how I feel. Sometimes I'll be like, ah, I want to do it. And then sometimes I'm like, let me go talk to people. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'm going to try to do better, y'all. I am. I just, I think it's a personality disorder, you know. <laughs> That's what my brand is. It's called I Do What I Want. I Do What I Want. That's, that's what it's called, okay? I'm diverse. I do what I want. I change. It's like a roller coaster. So, <laughs> so I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope uh, it was helpful. If y'all have any questions, you can send them to me in my DM. Um, Bible questions, please. Um, or about products, about hair and stuff, or whatever. Uh, my website is up. It is currently still being worked on. Um, I'm adding inventory and things of that nature. So, yeah, go ahead. Everything is I Heart Tia Tia or Dynamic Girl Beauty. So, at that, we'll leave it there and y'all have a good one.